Tonight on Freaking TV, Chalk on Central Square, and we had a roundtable discussion about the upcoming elections. Hello, and thank you for joining us. Hello, and thank you for joining us tonight. I'm your anchor, Derek J. Freeman. Central Square has been the focus point for a lot of activism lately. This past Saturday, a number of individuals took to the commons with chalk. Political and cultural messages littered the walkways. Free Keen TVs, my, myself were there on the scene to interview the participants and observers. I am here with Kate Ager. Today is October 1st, it's National Chalk the Police Day. 16 different cities are participating. All too often today, folks with badges who claim to protect us are the people who are actually violating our rights. You yourself may have experienced some of this harassment. That's why we're announcing and partaking in National Chalk the Police Day, October 1st. We are advocating for police accountability. Anybody who has a message that they would like to say to their local police department can feel free to write it on the ground in chalk. It's a peaceful way to communicate. It all links back to a June 4th incident at the Manchester Police Department. And then said I was being arrested and grabbed me by the arm and threw me to the ground. They just got in the line, came around the corner and walked north on the street. And all of a sudden, next thing I know, I'm getting arrested. Dude, Charlie next to me, he's getting arrested. Where eight individuals were arrested, many of them charged with graffiti or criminal mischief for riding with chalk on the sidewalk in the building of public property. So we're just out here riding with chalk on public property. It harms nobody. The lovely sidewalk chalk. You did it. I did. You did? Yeah. Do you have people who videotape it? What's that? Do you have people who videotape it? That's possible. I don't know. Are you camera? investigating me? Well, we could. We'll take the camera. You're going to steal cameras again? Yes. It's like your MO, isn't it? How's the turnout today? It's pretty good. There are quite a few people here. There are some people from the college. My name's Derek. I'm here with Free Keen TV. What's your names? I'm Molly. I'm Rebecca. And are you both Keen locals? Yes. Yes. Okay, and how did you hear about this event today? Actually, I did hear about it a little while ago. Yeah. Just through people that it existed. I'm in Students for Sensible Drug Policy and they talked about it, so. Now that you're here, what's your perception of the event? I think it's a good idea. What would you say to those who would call this vandalism? It washes away. It's only considered vandalism because of the message and people don't agree with it. Yeah. So. A lot of people have been writing messages. If you look around the common, it's covered in chalk. So is, there's a strong turnout for chalkers as well as media. Which, yes. Is that fair to say? Yes. So we're rolling up to Superior Court here. Give me your uh, your name, please, sir. Or can I? Do you have a name badge that I can uh, take video of? Thank you. And uh, what is your position with the uh, sheriff's department? All right. Let's just, I'm trying to be uh, polite by asking you questions. You are a public servant. What do you think about the uh, talking? Yeah? You know that though, right? You know that. Like I also have video of other Manchester police saying you were crazy for arresting us. That's good. Have they told you that themselves? Who? The other Manchester police you work with that say chalking isn't a crime. I don't know of anybody like that. No? I'll have to send you the video. Yeah. You know, it's not, not too late to apologize and just let it all go. You mean you're going to apologize to no, us? No, you are. Oh. You guys agree with that statement? Oh, good for you, man. 
He was? Some of your buddies, uh, like John Patty, arrested me and want to put me in jail for two years for that. Three years? Yeah, for violating my freedom of speech. Do I still not have that? Great, yeah. Thanks. You don't think that there's a First Amendment right to freedom of speech? No? It's too bad. No corporate sponsor telling me what to do, asking me to tone it down during the interview. I think it's great. Give she's a chance. Large. I love the place I live, but I hate the people in charge. It seems keen police are a little more lenient about the chalk than Manchester. Tonight, we are joined by Heike Corser and Rick Blood. We are also trying a new format for today's show. Heike and Rick are both running for local office. Heike for a large city council seat and Rick Blood is running for a keen mayor. We are going to get a chance to talk with the both of you about your campaigns, but first, I'd like to know your opinion of the video we just watched. Heike? Um, I don't mind chalking on sidewalks. I mean, little kids do it with hopscotch. It's just the message that I think people aren't really liking. Um, but I, I don't like it on buildings and memorials and whatnot. I think sticking to the sidewalks is just fine. Okay. What about you, Rick? Well, I guess uh, the way I look at it, it was non-toxic chalk, right? Mm -hmm. Well, there you go. It's cheaper than signs. <laughs> you know, you're not creating any, any waste. That is true. So uh, that's one way to look at it, I guess. Uh, anytime you buck the system in any way, it's going to upset people Absolutely. because people don't want to hear the message that you're giving them. Does anybody think it's uh, strange that the only people who seem to have a problem with the chalk were cops, that all the passerbys seem to enjoy? Uh, Keene or Manchester? Well, there were only interviews from Keene, so that's okay. what I would all speak right. to. Well, we also saw a little clip from Manchester. Um, I was actually on my Facebook today, and there's a lot of uproar from townspeople about the chalking. Oh. Yeah. So, I mean, they just might not have seen you, seen people doing it at that moment, but there was a lot of uproar, mostly about the memorial, oh. the war memorial. Oh. I don't like the war memorial, but I mean, I don't want to upset people either. So. so, there were complaints that it was chalked upon. What do you think makes the memorial different from the sidewalk? I don't know. Does, is the memorial different from the sidewalk, Rick? I, I, I think it should be. I mean, a memorial, whether or not you agree with the war, the memorial is designed for people to, to remember the, the men and women that have gone before us that right. helped to give us the freedom to sit here and talk about the things we're talking about. Right. Right. So you can't hold that against the soldiers. They should be memorialized, I think. Hmm. You know, they're just following orders in the huge spectrum of things, you know? And it's basically, it's a job. Rick, what do you make of the video and what's going on in Central Square? I don't know really what the big deal is. Central Square, I don't go there because I have no reason to go there. There's, the fountain doesn't run anymore. Um, it's just, there's too many cars pollution and if I sit in the in the square smoking a cigarette amidst the thousands of cars and exhaust fumes people are going to complain about my side stream cigarette smoke <laughs> Rather so I don't it's, it's not a peaceful place anymore I mean whether there's people in it or not it's not really a peaceful place I mean the cars honking and you hear the loud music from the cars and right know. it's it's a business district mm -hmm. and it's for business now let's right. move on to the election. Rick, <laughs> you're running for Keynes mayor. Can you tell the viewers a little about yourself and your platform? Well, a uh, little about myself. I guess I, uh, I grew up here in Keene, been here basically my whole life. Uh, served a little bit of time in the military, uh, in the Navy. Did uh, a little bit of time at the Cheshire County Correctional farm when I was up in Westmoreland. Um, Working or living? 
Both. <laughs> that was when if you lived there, you had to work there. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yes, I was incarcerated for nine months. Um, I was a thief. Ooh. Yeah, I was a, a very bad person in my early days, which is one of the reasons why, you know, now it's time. I work for Cheshire TV, which is a, gives me a, a great opportunity to give back to the community. Running for mayor is the next step, you know. And Good I don't really you. have a platform <laughs> other than the fact that I think the city, all right, well, I better start out with saying this. I'm not <laughs> anti-government or anti-big government. I'm anti-elitist government. Hmm. I say make the government as big as we can, only put regular people in the government. Not the suit and tie, you know. I agree 100%. You have to have $50 million to be president. 100%. I want a, I want a poor man. Let's make a homeless guy the president. He needs a place to live, <laughs> you know. Um, some of these guys will work for food, so you know, give him a place to live, give him some food, and tell him he's the president. Certainly. And just start working, you know. I would work for food. Maybe he knows. <laughs> he may know better than anybody what the country needs. <laughs> well, it would certainly make the position cheaper. Heike, can you speak about why we are running? For why you were running for office? Um, basically, I care about Keene and what the community members want, and I want to stand for what my neighborhood, my neighbors and my community members want. I don't really have a platform either. I just, just love Keene. <laughs> well, you, you both seem to love Keene. What do you both think about the amount of property taxes landowners pay in Keene? and how that money is spent. I, I do hear that the property taxes are high and I think something needs to be done about that and not expanding the tax district. Hmm. But, um, yes. I've actually got a plan to bring down property taxes. You do? Oh. I do. Unfortunately, I'm told it's illegal. How's that? Because... Stop uh, paying them? Something <laughs> called home rule. And I'm not, I'm not a politician. But apparently it's the fact that the state basically gives the city all of its power and the city can't do anything that the state has on its books or something. Hmm. Hmm. In other words, it, my idea is I think that Keene should put in place a one penny transaction fee for any business transaction done in Keene. And what would all those pennies go to? All those pennies would go into the general fund to help bring down property taxes. I like that. I see. And a penny, a penny's nothing. Right. I mean, usually you get a penny back and what do you do with it? Throw, you throw it on the street. Or you put it in the give a penny, take a penny, or it mm -hmm. goes into a jar and sits in your room for years. Now, and <laughs> how, many how many business transactions do you think happen in the city of Keene every single day? A ton. <laughs> Everything from, I mean, if you go and buy one pack of cigarettes or a pack of gum, that's a penny. If you buy $500 worth of groceries, it's a penny. If you buy a car, it's a penny. Right, but those, I like those that pennies idea. do and add up. And we wouldn't be allowed to do that? The, uh, some, some rule in the state says that we can't, the city of Keene can't just, you know, start a new tax or fee or, or something, apparently. That's what mm -hmm. I've been told. I mean, like I said, I, I don't really know, but as mayor, that's one of the things that I would really push for. Well, Rick, like speaking of laws, what are your opinions on gun rights and hunting rights, both widely celebrated in the area? Oh, yeah. I, and I used, to, I used to hunt as a kid before I became a felon. Oh, and I now, see, see I'm, I'm unclear as to whether I can even own a hunting rifle. You know, my felony was 20 years ago, a nonviolent felony. Uh, and I, you know, at this point, I don't know what rights I have, what rights I don't have. You know, as far as can I leave the country, mm. can I own a gun, can I do this? Um, and that kind of stuff is, but yeah, I believe that, you know, that's the Second Amendment. The mm. right to bear arms. In the same, same so. boat, I fully, 100% support um, gun rights. I just think people need to do it in a responsible manner. Well, yeah. If so that's why I love the classes where you can be educated on how to handle a gun, how to use a gun, when to use a gun. You know, right. I love that, right. and I think that's key to responsible ownership. 
And that's that's the that's the key right there. Responsible ownership. I own a gun. Really nice. Yes, I love it. It's pink and glittery. <laughs> So clearly you both defend the Second Amendment in Keene, but mm -hmm. I'm, I'm curious uh, what you said about your uh, penny system and how you think the uh, prison system has been unfair to people in, in the local area, if, if you do indeed think that. Oh, you want Be me to because, talk about this? This well, is one of my pet peeves too. Well, you did say that the uh, fact that uh, felony crime had made uh, your life more confusing. Um, is, is that <clears throat> fair representation of what you said? Uh, yeah, kind of. Okay. I mean, it Maybe doesn't really affect me because okay. I haven't wanted to leave the United States for or, any reason. Or, or do hunting. Or a hunting right. or anything. Uh, I just live my life, you know, and just well, hope that everybody leaves me alone. Yes, <laughs> I <see. laughs> That's the whole key. Yeah. Yeah, I don't care what laws they have, what, you know, just, I'll leave everybody else alone if they leave me alone. And, you know. Um, that seems to be a, a popular uh, opinion of the folks around here. Well, and and we jails, I mean, I'm, I hate the fact that we have jails. But we have to have jails. Problem is, taxpayers pay to keep people in jail. Hmm. Unfortunately, our jails house people that have done victimless crimes, you know, smoking a joint on Central Square, s standing in front of a cop car too long. Oh, the one that gets me is, like that. is um, some of the Free State guys that have been locked up for not, not telling them what their names are. We and had someone in, my in opinion, jail for two weeks for that, or almost two weeks In for my that. opinion, I'm like, you know, just tell this yeah. guy, we don't care what your name is, get out of our state and stay out of our state. <laughs> so you would say it's not a crime, but you would kick him out? I would, yeah, I mean, there are social rules, you know, normal social rules. When somebody asks you your name, you tell them your name. I mean, it's kind of a polite thing to yeah, do. I hear that. Um, but I don't know. Yes, you know, it's, it's, it sounds like it would, it would, uh, yeah. I actually... I actually Encourage said in one of my old unfiltered shows, I said, we don't need bigger prisons. We just need to give the cops more bullets. <laughs> you know, and encourage good behavior. Because if, if you do bad behavior, guess what? The cops are going to get a shot. But we should encourage I mean, good behavior with the cops, too. Well, yes. So, some of them shouldn't have guns. Yeah, and I mean, <laughs> granted, the, I mean, the cops have... Uh, one of the hardest jobs in the world. I would never want to be a cop, just for the simple fact that there are bad people out there. Um, I don't think that a lot of times they're fairly treated in some of the, the recent media. And my, my answer to that is, uh, you know, and, and the whole filming thing kills me. You know, they want to, they harp on you guys for the cameras when if they were smart they would and be doing thinking it too. straight, they would get their own cameras. And as mayor, I would, I would demand that our, our police officers are all equipped with the little video headset. And then you know exactly you know? what's going on, and it's, and it's for their protection too. Exactly. It's their protection, the, the protection of the, the citizens, and mm -hmm. as well as the victims. Personally, I think the, uh, the criminals, and I think criminals get way too many rights. Would you release that video to the public in the public interest? Well, sure. Oh, great. That, that they do sounds on co like the it show would Cops really all the time. Yeah, I yes. mean, <laughs> there, should, there should only be one reason not to allow cameras into any legal type of thing, and that's to protect the victim, not the criminal, the victim. Right. You know, don't show the victim. So you know, what you guys should do to, to really get around them is find yourself a nice sketch artist to go into the courtrooms and sketch <laughs> because sketch artists are still legal. That's yeah. a, that's how a do, good how do you point. feel about that, actually, the uh, ban of cameras in the court? Like I said, yeah. in order to protect victims, I can understand it, but the public has a right to know. I think the police chief every week should go on Channel 8 here, Cheshire TV, and read the names of everybody that's been arrested in the past week and what they've been arrested for. Hmm. C certainly interesting both comments from both sides. Uh, but what is your opinion of Pumpkin Fest? 
<laughs> I'll go first. Fest, pumpkin yeah, fest. I'll go first because I'm a little wound up about this. <laughs> I've said it. I mean, I said it You're uh, so great. <laughs> an hour ago on my own show on Talking Off. We don't need to bring half the country into our town to have a successful event. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I am not impressed with pump. I haven't been for a few years now. I haven't been impressed with it. And last year was just terrible. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the lack of pumpkins, the lack of community involvement. Um, it's because the community doesn't come out anymore. No, it's I don't, I don't enjoy the it. The only reason why I was there last year was to support the 100 Night Shelter. Other than that, there's no way that I would have been in that crowd. What would you like to see at Pumpkin Fest that would bring you out? I would like to see the community out there bringing pumpkins and and that's it. Just have it a town event. Like the music fest. Oh, I see. Like that's mostly local. I like that. Right. Right. The music fest is, although that's starting to get big, and the, the more years it goes on, the bigger it'll get because that's. And then it's going to become unenjoyable. Like, right. And, and that just sucks. <laughs> when I grew up in Keene, we used to have what they called a street fair. It was one weekend during the summer, and all the downtown merchants would bring their sidewalk sales out. And they'd close the street, and there'd be vendors and everything. But that was for the community. Right. You know, to shop the local vendors. All the local vendors would have a big sale that weekend and bring all their prices down. Well, they're saying, oh, and well, it's good for business and blah, blah, blah. Well, really? Like, but you don't have the townspeople coming out. Right. And how much does it cost in the end? I think and a lot. <laughs> I hear this year you were telling me that there's going to be no smoking. At the um, Fest? According, I saw a flyer at my work, and it said um, no smoking on Main Street during Pumpkin Festival. Really? How do you, how do you feel about that, Heike? Um, <laughs> good luck with that. I'll be smoking. I'm a smoker. I want to know where my rights are as a smoker. Everybody talks about all the non-smokers' rights. What about but I'm, I'm a courteous rights? smoker too. Like I see kids, I I make a point to move away. Right. You know, I I see people that are non-smoking. I don't blow smoke in their face. I wait. Was there anything yeah. on that flyer about um, no alcohol being served in Keene on Pumpkin Fest Day? No. Oh, no. Apparently all the, the trouble last year stemmed from alcohol, right? Not and cigarettes. And so they punished the cigarettes. So, yeah, smokers. let's take away the cigarettes. What about the strollers it's, that roll people over because parents aren't paying attention? And no dogs? They made the no let's, dogs let's rule? Let's ban dogs. Let's ban strollers. Let's, let's just ban, like... Everything. I got an so, idea. I'm Why don't we just say no pumpkin fest at the pumpkin fest? I am a okay with that. <laughs> it sounds like you would both be repealing some bands. <laughs> I would like to see a, an air show. Wow. Oh, that would be cool. You know, and when I grew up, I, every year there was an air show. Here in town? Oh, yeah. And we, I mean, big acts, Blue Angels. Wow. Flew in and out of Keene in the 70s. And that would help with the uh, airport there. Apparently... You know, the airport is a lot to run, so the city's just kind of... I think they're starting to give up on that. They shouldn't. They shouldn't. The airport should be, a, you know, a place that we bring people in. Mm -hmm. And not people necessarily to stay in Keene. People that are passing through on their way other. Private pilots are rich. You know, guys that own planes, they got money to throw around. Yeah. And if there are nice amenities at an airport... They'll land at that airport every time they fly to get their fuel, to get their maintenance, mm -hmm. to get, to get I anything, agree. you know? Have either of you been to the Keene Airport? Not recently. I go for the uh, India Pavilion. I was down there uh, last week when the World War II planes came in. Oh, wow. Very nice event. Oh, that, so that was a city event that they planned that went on? I didn't hear anything about that. The city that. had nothing to do with that. Oh, so, ah. so this was organized by whom? Monadnock Aviation. I see. Rick and Beth Bendel. And well, that's I a mean, nice event. They're single-handedly trying to revitalize our airport. So, would you like to see more personal travel coming from there, or would that involve the TSA? I, I don't know. I mean, it seems like we should have some kind of small charter flights, but maybe, maybe the demand is just not there. But, you know, as a as I'd a like to see it more airport, successful than it is right now. It would be nice to have a, a more vital airport. It's been, it's been there for a long time. Well, a lot of uh, people in Keene know about the airport, but they don't get to use it. 
more common are the parking meters. So how do you feel about parking meters and the new kiosk <laughs> system? <laughs> Well, these are the hardball questions here. I know. <laughs> What's going on, Derek? <laughs> All right. We talked about this. <laughs> this is my idea. Um, for one thing, we don't need the kiosks. Our parking meters work just fine. Uh, if, you're gonna, if you want to increase parking revenue, you do it by running the parking meters longer. Run them till 11 o'clock at night. Why should the people that go to the bars not have to pay the parking meters when people that are paying their bills during the day have to. Run them until 11 o'clock at night. And no, we don't need more meter people. Thank you. <laughs> we let regular cops write tickets. They should know they, how. They do in the middle of the night for overnight parking. Where would you like and to see go. the parking money go? Building a new parking garage yeah, now that the they've taken up, garage? now that they've taken up most of Elm Street parking lot. I have a long-term vision where I would like to see Main Street eventually closed right down to vehicle traffic. A couple of big no. parking decks on the outside and a nice big walking, walking mall, from say uh, Emerald Street up to the Common. Hmm. All just a that nice allow, big, a wide walking. open walking area. Maybe put some permanent vendors, permanent like street vendors and, and buskers. Let's have some street entertainment. Some of these young kids that play instruments and stuff, you know, let them make some money. Well, that would change the traffic dynamic around the square. I think it would. We would definitely need those parking garages. Yeah. Well, that, I mean, that would be one of the keys is you need to get some good parking structures. Mm -hmm. And why we haven't in the past, I don't know. We've always, when the Well Street garage went in, I had always thought that when they put that in, it was designed so that it could be added onto it, it, and enlarged. We're not allowed to, we can't. I don't think we can, I don't up. think they can build up anymore on that due to structural stuff or something. Isn't it only and the what, same two, way with the city hall three, parking thing? Two stories? No, three stories, right? It's two stories. It's only two stories? Yeah. Same as the one behind City Hall. Are these both owned by the city government? I believe they are. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And so they could get more of those. Um, but both, unfortunately, we're going to have to wrap up. Thank you for joining us tonight. As always, contact Freekeen TV by sending an email to freekeen.com. I'm Derek J. Freeman saying good night, peace be with you, and yours. Thank <laughs> you.